only time tithe turned to money was if there was a long journey and they couldn't carry all the crops and stuff. Mm -hmm. Then when right. they got to the destination, they would go to the money changers right. and right. get right. the stuff. Right. Ooh, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Deuter, uh, Deuteronomy talks about that, 410. It talks about the journey was too long. Matter of fact, it said if the journey was too long, take the tithe and exchange it for money. It says that. So if tithe was money, then that means that sentence will say, if the trip be too long, take the money and exchange it for money. That make any sense. Go back to uh, Romans 13. I, I, I'm gonna get into this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and really, that's why Paul says, and I, I'll end this here. We'll, we'll pick this up next week. But th that's why Paul says what he says. He that preaches the gospel ought to live of the gospel. Now, what gospel did you think Paul is talking about? He ain't talking about paying no tithes and offerings back here. He talking about the gospel of the grace of God. I had somebody ask me, so, well. I go to this church, I grew up in this church, should I give them my money? I said, absolutely not. I said, absolutely not. Because Paul says, your money should be going to somebody who preaches the gospel. That's right. mm -hmm. He's not talking about the gospel of the kingdom. He's talking about the gospel of the grace of God. Yes. Somebody who rightly divides and understands that Paul is our apostle and the 13 epistles is the, is the doctrine for the body of Christ. That's who you give your money to. Mm -hmm. Right? You don't get, that's why, that's why all these other mega churches are so rich. And they're not preaching truth because the people are being condemned, duped out of their money. Thinking that tithe, well, tithe, God meant that back here, but now we're living up. No, no, no. Money was back there. He knew what it was. And so they changed the word of God to make it fit their, their, their tradition. Exactly. Right? They changed the word of God. If God meant tithe to be money, he would have said that. Amen. Because like, he knew what money was. You think God didn't know what money was? He knew what it was. It was in the book of Genesis. He knew exactly what money was. That's right. right. But people, because they take, they'll take you to Malachi, will a man rob God? Wait, he had robbed me of tithing and offerings, and then take you to 1 Corinthians 9, when you give, give cheerfully. Mm. See that sound? You just put that right together. You know, you, you condemn them, and then you take them to Paul where it says give cheerfully. So now don't, you know, I'm, I'm condemning you so you understand you need to give a tithe, but just do it cheerfully. <laughs> tithe was a commandment, a certain amount, right? So if, if I got to give a certain amount, how can I give that cheerfully in a free will without any obligation, as Paul says? There's an obligation because you're telling me what to give. Right? <laughs> it's a, yeah. So, so, uh, so understand that, but Paul is saying uh, uh, we ought to obey, pay the customs that we ought to pay. Do the things that we ought to do. Look at verse 8, Romans 13. Owe no man what? Anything. But to love one another, for he that loveth another hath did what? Both Both the law. And now Paul is going to go through some of the things that's in the law. Now why would you think Paul is telling people who are under grace about the Ten Commandments here? Stuff that you do is if you the principles. Because he's saying yeah. that if you love your brother, these are the things that you're doing. All right, look, 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 principles I'm going to pick this up next week, but I just want you to ponder on this. Out of all the stuff that we learned about transition is a good one to understand this. Uh, who is there? A lot of that's understand. But look at verse 8. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth one another hath did what? Fulfilled the law. Now look at verse 10. After he's, verse 9, he says some of the Ten Commandments. Look at verse 10. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore the love is the fulfilling of the what? Love. So in between, in between verses 8 and 10 is verse 9 when he gives some of the Ten Commandments as far as thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not cover those things. And then 8 and 10, he talks about love is doing what? Fulfilling, fulfilling those things. Right? Just think about it. I don't want to give it to you. But uh, any other questions? God, God is what? Love. We have the love of Christ shed abroad in our what? Hearts. By the Holy Ghost, which is what? Give it unto us. So have we fulfilled the law? If we don't love, we have it. Yes, yes. If we love, we have Completely. We have the Spirit. Completely fulfilled. I'll go, I'll go through it next week. That's, that's, that's a hit. 
but 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 just but I I'll give it to you a little bit, and I'll I'll go back through it and give you some scriptures to break it down next week. We have the love of Christ in us, right? Whether you uh, are acting upon it or not, you have the love of Christ in you, and because you have the love of Christ in you, the law has been fulfilled. The law is already, it's been fulfilled. And notice he, now Paul never says anything about keeping the Sabbath and the other of the Ten Commandments. He only says, if you love your brother, will you steal from him? No. If you love him, will you cover something that he has? No. Right? right? He, well, he's telling you these things to let you understand that if you love somebody, you won't do these things. Why? Because love shows no ill. Love is the fulfilling of the law. Amen. God, when he first intended, before all of this law, and all, he always wanted men to love each other and dwell among each other. That was the whole point. That's why he set aside the nation of Israel, to get them to honor and love one another. That's what Paul is discussing here, because he's going to go right into chapter 14, right? It says that one man is statement one day above another. He's talking about offending your brother. That's what he's going to say, love to all the saints. It's about love. If you love your neighbor as yourself, that's one of those uh, principles that are throughout Scripture. God is love. God taught love here through the law. Here, love is always going to be. So when you have the love of Christ in you, you fulfill the law. That's what he's talking about. But he's giving you these, these things because there were Jews there. So he's giving them these things to get them to understand. All of these things that God was telling you back here, the whole purpose of it was to show you love. That was the whole point of it, right? It, well, he's not telling you to go back and keep the Ten Commandments. That's not why he's mentioning this. He's telling you that to let you know that love is the fulfillment of everything that God ever ordained. Amen. That you love one another. That's the whole point. So the answer is yes. The question that you had. <laughs> yes, yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> Any comments, questions, observations? Now we know what to say next week. <laughs> you said what? Now we know what to say next week. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'll pray us out. Father God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for understanding, oh God. We thank you for that we uh, understand the knowledge of the truth and we're not ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. But we thank you for the illumination of our minds. Help us not to react based on how we feel, but help us to act based on what we know. And we know that we have the love of Christ shed abroad in our hearts. We understand who you are. We understand whose we are. And Father God, we ask right now that you continue to live, our, live out through us. Help us to understand that we're crucified and we, it's not we that live, but it's you that live in us, oh God. Father God, help us not to grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Help us to do the things that are pleasing to you. And what pleases you is faith because it's impossible to please you without faith. We understand that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So help us to study to show ourselves approved. Father God, we ask you to bless those who are sick among us. Uh, heal them according to your will, O God. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.